So this is Joaquina Sitka coming to you to share yet one more vocal alchemy video with you this evening. And the topic that is most important to me in this video is very much related to the topic of life force energy, but it's a bit of an offshoot. Um, if you've watched uh, sort of my uh, uh, part one, part two, part three discussion of life force energy, um, you might follow the kind of drift. Um, Cause it's kind of a big subject, and and so all of these I'm kind of piggybacking on like a whole bunch of different topics and um, and and uh, thought processes around this whole thing, and so. The thing that I have actually really wanted to discuss in a vocal alchemy video for like as l since before I even started this like a year ago um, is about cultivating ecstatic energy. And I began talking about it in the last video to a degree, just saying that, you know, basically ecstatic energy is. Um, an important aspect of the vocal alchemy practice because you know part part one of the vocal alchemy practice is cultivating the inward gaze the internal gaze of awareness and of our life force energy so yes once you've created that meditative state of inner gaze of the inner glance you know that's that's very important maybe the most important thing however what do you do with that once you got it because you could do that and then you could just put yourself to sleep you could do that and then you could just just get distracted and go somewhere else for the vocal alchemy practice one what i desire is to bring the gaze internally bring it into the body and into the breath and then take that inner gaze and start popping popcorn Popping popcorn with your life force. So you sort of like, basically, it's about like kind of incrementally, vibrationally uplifting yourself into greater and greater levels of like ecstatic energy. Which is a part of the reason why I studied and practiced Tantra for like six years or so. Because Tantra is has has a lot to say about ecstatic energy and about cultivating ecstatic energy and its relationship to the life force. And at least that's how I've interpreted it and how I've learned it. Um, but getting back to the vocal alchemy thing, basically, um, one of the things that I'm really inspired by. Um, that is like a huge inspiration for the vocal alchemy work that I do in the workshop setting is um, what I read about in several books by Bradford Keeney, most notably the book Bushman Shaman, in which he documents the his personal experiences with the um, the Bushman shamans of Namibia in which they would dance all night long um, and they would attain ecstatic states, altered consciousness states where they would start vibrating and sort of like shaking and they would start shaking on each other and they would start like merging through this ecstatic shake and the shaman would essentially heal the people who needed to be healed through this sort of like by undulating their ecstasy onto their client, the person who needed to receive whatever he needed. But, fundamental, it, it, this was kind of like a bit of a gendered process because fundamental, for the most part, in the Bushman shaman um, ritual, the men were the ones who were doing the sort of like dancing and the shaking, and the women, were the ones who were clapping and chanting and 
it, you know, basically, you can't get your dance on unless you got your chant on, unless you got your, your rhythm, and you got your, you, you have to have a song, you have to have a melody, and you have to have a clap in order to fuel an ecstatic dance, and in order to fuel an ecstatic trance. So basically, the chant and the rhythm is, is the source of a shaman's ecstasy that does the healing. So, the way that I sing has often been described as sort of somewhat African sounding. So a lot of people tell me that I sound like a black woman and a white woman's body. Um, and basically, I'm inspired by African singing for sure but I haven't studied it because it just came to me literally spirit just started channeling African sounding songs into my consciousness into my heart and um, and the thing that I really appreciate the most about it is the way that I've learned how to sing has multiple aspects to it. Number one, it's non-verbal and it's non-linguistic. So therefore, the rational mind has nothing to hook onto. Nothing. So basically, it takes the rational mind and goes thunk. And in comes the irrational, non-linear mind of the intuitive self because of the nonverbal chanting. That's a very important part. Number two, I've learned how to take a relatively complicated melody and find a hook that I can that that I can make really simple and basically get anybody to sing with me in a very primal kind of way. Say you can even repeat after me. Te undo, te undo, te undo, ah, ah, te undo, ah, ah, undo, te undo, ah, undo, ah, 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 ah, undo, Undo, pa, pa, de undo, yindi to me undo, ta, ta, de undo, coco pan de puliendo, co, de undo, pita con mac be undo, quita con mac de undo, quita con vet be undo, linda co be undo, guinda con vet be undo, mando, y undo, guinda con vet be so basically, what I've come to discover is that by singing rhythmically in a non-linguistic, non-rational self, you open up the gateway to ecstasy. It's true. I've experienced it many times now. It's very joyful and the best part about it that I love is that you know you, you can you can you can experience like these transcendental states with so many different kinds of singing and chanting like for example kirtan great example the only difference is is that um, with something like kirtan or just like oming or chanting, like other forms of just kind of like more traditional chanting, it's a little bit more like, there's a little bit more of like a structure. The way that I work and the way that I hold space in a vocal alchemy session is I actually really encourage a let go to happen because what I ideally want is primal ecstasy. 
I want that because that is what feels good to me. Basically, I want to get my freak out of the hair and just be like, oh. And that's what happens when I get into my space. I'm just like, turn on the funk and get out of the funk. And I want that for I want that for everybody. Basically, I want that for everybody that comes to a workshop because that is one way to fill the cup you know you can fill the cup in this like very still soothing rejuvenating way but honestly my favorite way to fill the cup is to energize the cup through ecstatic states of primal ecstasy and if you want to know what I be talking about you're just gonna have to bring me to your town and host me to do a vocal alchemy workshop in your neck of the woods honey because lord have mercy I can't wait to get my hands on you mm. nor can I wait to get my voice on you you know what I'm saying talking about primal ecstasy through the voice coming to us somewhere near you hopefully sooner rather than later love ya Meow.